Picture a time when the world was at war, a time of uncertainty, fear and immense human suffering. This was the world in the early 1940s. The globe was engulfed in the throes of the Second World War, an era marked by the rise of one of history's most notorious figures, Adolf Hitler, and the inception of the Nazi regime. Hitler's ideologies, rooted in racial purity and Aryan supremacy, swept across Europe, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. The political climate was one of tension and terror as nations fell under the oppressive hand of the Nazi regime. Society was divided, families torn apart, and the very fabric of humanity seemed to be unravelling. The entire world held its breath as it watched the unfolding horrors. In the midst of this chaos, a symbol of human cruelty emerged in Poland, Auschwitz. Auschwitz, a name that would soon become synonymous with the Holocaust, was established in 1940. Nestled in the occupied Polish territory, this initially unassuming entity was initially constructed as a concentration camp for Polish political prisoners. The Nazis, freshly victorious in their invasion of Poland, sought to quell any form of resistance and opposition. Hence, Auschwitz came into existence, a grim manifestation of the Nazis' oppressive regime. However, as the wheels of the Second World War churned further, so did the sinister purpose of Auschwitz. It slowly morphed into something far more horrific, a death camp for Jews. The year 1941 marked a pivotal point in the camp's history. This was the juncture when Auschwitz began to expand, not just in size, but in the scale of its atrocities. New camps were built, each one larger and more equipped than the last, to accommodate the surge of Jewish prisoners deported from all corners of Nazi-occupied Europe. Around the same time, a deadly addition was introduced to the camp's arsenal of atrocities, Zyklon B, a cyanide-based pesticide repurposed for mass murder. This lethal substance was used in gas chambers where thousands of innocent lives were extinguished in the most inhumane way possible. The introduction of Zyklon B marked the beginning of the final solution, the Nazis' plan for the systematic extermination of Jews. The transformation of Auschwitz from a concentration camp to a death factory was neither sudden nor accidental. It was a calculated evolution, fueled by the Nazis' relentless pursuit of their twisted ideology. It was a testament to how far the tendrils of hatred and prejudice could reach, turning a place meant for confinement into an assembly line of death. By the end of 1941, Auschwitz had transformed into the largest and most lethal concentration camp in the Nazi Empire. It was no longer just a place for political prisoners. It was the epicentre of the Holocaust, a place where humanity was forgotten and life was cheap. Life in Auschwitz was a living nightmare, a constant struggle for survival. Imagine a place where the sun's rays felt cold, where hope was a luxury few could afford. The nightmare was real for the millions who found themselves in Auschwitz, a name that would become synonymous with the darkest corners of human history. Every day was a battle against the odds. The prisoners, stripped of their identities, were reduced to numbers, treated less than human. They lived in deplorable conditions, crammed into barracks with little to no sanitation. Disease was rampant and medical care was virtually non-existent. Food was scarce and a meagre ration of stale bread and thin soup was all that sustained them, barely enough to keep the embers of life flickering. But physical deprivation was only a part of the horror. The prisoners lived under the constant shadow of brutality. Beatings, public executions and forced labour were everyday realities. The SS guards wielded absolute power, their cruelty only matched by their indifference to human life. Yet even these atrocities paled in comparison to the systematic extermination process that Auschwitz was designed for. The chilling efficiency of the gas chambers, the crematoria working round the clock, the countless lives extinguished, it was a machinery of death unparalleled in its grim efficiency. Every day, trainloads of people arrived, most oblivious to the fate that awaited them. They were subjected to a selection process, a grim sorting of those who could work and those who couldn't. The latter, the old, the young, the frail, were led straight to the gas chambers, their lives snuffed out with chilling efficiency. Auschwitz was not just a camp, it was a meticulously planned death factory. It stands as a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink and the price we pay when we turn a blind eye to the suffering of others. 
As we delve deeper into the history of Auschwitz, let us not forget the human faces behind the numbers, the stories of those who lived, suffered and perished in this place of unspeakable horror. In the face of such unprecedented horror, there were glimmers of hope and resistance. Auschwitz, despite its grim reality, was not entirely devoid of resistance. The prisoners, stripped of their freedom and dignity, found their own means to fight back, to resist, and to prove their indomitable spirit. One of the most notable acts of defiance was the Sonderkommando uprising in October 1944. The Sonderkommandos were prisoners tasked with the horrendous job of disposing of gas chamber victims. These brave souls knew they were living on borrowed time and so planned a revolt. Using weapons smuggled in from the outside, they managed to blow up one of the crematoriums, causing significant damage and disrupting the camp's operations. But resistance was not always grand and explosive. Many times it was subtle, small and yet profoundly impactful. There were acts of sabotage, where prisoners would deliberately slow the pace of work or damage the machinery they were forced to operate. There were secret schools and libraries, where knowledge was shared as an act of intellectual defiance against the Nazis' attempts to dehumanise them. There were also daring escapes. Some prisoners managed to slip past the guards, navigate the treacherous minefields and escape into the surrounding forests. Each successful escape was a beacon of hope, a testament to the human will to survive. But perhaps the most profound form of resistance was the preservation of humanity within the camp. The prisoners shared their rations, cared for the sick and comforted the dying. They wrote poetry, played music and even fell in love. In a place designed to strip them of their humanity, they clung fiercely to it. Resistance in Auschwitz took many forms, but all shared a common thread of courage and resilience. It was a testament to the strength of the human spirit, a refusal to be broken and a proof of the power of hope. Despite the dire circumstances, the spirit of resistance in Auschwitz was a testament to human resilience. As the tide of war turned against the Nazis, the end of Auschwitz was in sight. The year was 1945, and the Soviet forces were advancing, their march resonating like a drumbeat of impending freedom. The Nazis, sensing their imminent defeat, initiated a mass evacuation of Auschwitz. This was no ordinary retreat. It was a forced march, a death march of around 60,000 prisoners made to walk in the bitter cold without sufficient clothing or food. The prisoners who survived this brutal march were sent to other concentration camps within Germany. Those who couldn't keep up were shot on the spot. Despite the horrors of the march, for many, it was the first taste of freedom, the first glimmer of hope in years. But let us not forget those who remained in Auschwitz, those too weak or sick to march, left behind like discarded remnants of the Nazis' cruel regime. For them, Liberation came on January 27, 1945, when the Soviet forces finally arrived at Auschwitz. What they found was a haunting testament to human cruelty. Thousands of emaciated prisoners and piles of belongings stripped from those who had been sent to their deaths. The aftermath of Auschwitz was a slow process of healing and justice. Many survivors were left with physical and psychological scars that would last a lifetime. They had to rebuild their lives, find lost family members or come to terms with their loss. War crime trials were held and key figures of the Auschwitz administration were brought to justice. But no amount of punishment could truly compensate for the atrocities committed. In the years that followed, Auschwitz became a symbol of the Holocaust, a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity. It stands today as a monument to memory, a testament to the resilience of those who survived and a solemn tribute to those who did not. In January 1945, Auschwitz was finally liberated, but the scars it left behind were indelible. Auschwitz today stands as a somber reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink. This haunting relic of a time marred by unparalleled hatred serves not only as a memorial, but also as a symbol of the Holocaust. Its remnants echo the chilling tales of millions whose lives were brutally extinguished and of those who survived, bearing the indelible scars of their ordeal. The lessons Auschwitz imparts are invaluable. It teaches us about the fragility of peace and the devastating consequences of unchecked prejudice and intolerance. It stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, 
a spirit that refused to be extinguished even in the face of such monstrous adversity. Remembering Auschwitz is not about dwelling in the past, but about learning from it. It's about honoring the memory of the victims, acknowledging the strength of the survivors, and striving to ensure that such atrocities never repeat. Through remembering Auschwitz, we honor the victims and survivors and pledge to prevent such atrocities from happening again.